Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Pixel Lab. We're gonna be talking about R20 today and some of my favorite features, which are of course the new volume features and the volume modeling. So this has been getting a lot of hype, but I definitely think it's worth the hype. It's a really powerful new system and lots of fun. So let's jump in and play around with it. So we're gonna do a volume builder to begin with, and we're gonna put our Motex inside of it and it generates some voxels. So our voxel size is going to determine how clear this is. If we drop this down to say one, it's going to be very clear. And uh, we'll probably wanna leave it around three or so just as we play around with it so it doesn't slow down too much. So this is the new volume builder. Now, if we hit render, nothing's going to render. This isn't actually a mesh. If we wanna render this out as a geometry, we have to go to volume and add a mesher. So a volume mesher, drag your volume builder inside of the mesher, and now we actually have a mesh. Now, what we can do is go into our volume builder and play around with a lot of new features in here. So the way that the volume builder works, I kind of think of it as if you're adding something to this model, it's sort of like a meta ball where they kind of blob together. And we can see that by adding, say, a platonic, and if we put this in the corner, and if we add this platonic inside of our volume builder, you can see that it starts to blend into it, kind of like a weld. So that's a really cool way to get that welded look or like it's actually part of the object. So that's sort of like a metal ball if you think about how it sort of blobs into it. So it kind of blobs together. But then we can also subtract it, which is sort of like a bool. So we have union or subtract. If we subtract it, we can create a notch out of there, which is really cool. So this is how um, like EJ was doing one on making cheese with a lot of holes in it. We can do something like that. Just make a bunch of holes and drag it all over the place. We would just duplicate it and then put one over here. And then we go into our volume builder and subtract that one also. And that way you can start really customizing your model. But what I wanted to show you today was how to add some of the new fields in conjunction with the volume builder. So. If we click on a smooth layer, let's change the smoothing type to a mean curvature and just give it a little bit of smoothing, smooth out the edges. Now under the filter, we also have this tab called fields. If you click on fields, we can access all of these new fields under here and we can go ahead and add a shader field. The other way that we could access the fields is by going to create field and then we could go down to shader field. And I think you can also do some interesting things if you did a random field, but we'll focus on shader for now because we can add a noise to it. So we added a shader field and let's go ahead and add a noise to this. Let's jump into our noise and change this to something else, uh, maybe like a blister turbulence. Another thing I like to do is play around with the cycles just to add a little bit more contrast. And then we can also maybe make this a little bit bigger. All right, so we got some really well-defined contrasty noise. Let's put that into our volume builder and let's see what happens. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that we do have sort of a cube full of noise, which is already really interesting. Um, but I want the text to inherit this. So how do we get this noise over to the text? If you'll notice, if we pull the axis, it's not actually moving the box, it's just moving the noise across and through the box. So what I've figured out is that we can actually add a new reference. So one way that we could do this is go to the volume builder, and if we click on the shader in here, we have a box size. But if we increase this box size, we'd have to increase it on all of the axes and it would get pretty big and there's a lot going on. So what I found is that you can actually add a cube and just put the cube in the center of where you actually want the noise to be. Just kind of scale it down to the, the area you want it to be. So if we do something like this, uh, now what we can do is go back into that volume builder and under this override box matrix, we can override this box with our new cube if we drag that in. Now it's gonna place that noise right in the position where we put it. Now what's really cool about this is if we turn off our cube, we can't actually scale this with our cube, but what we can do is move our cube around and now we can position the noise where we want it, which is great. And we can also rotate this, which is really good. So let's jump back into our volume builder and we have our cube in the override box but we have to change the size of this noise with this box size. So on this one, we can just increase the size and now it will encompass the text. But now is the fun part. Instead of adding, we wanna subtract it from our text. So we're gonna to go to our volume builder 
and let's switch this to subtract. And now we're getting that really interesting look where we're corroding through the text and it's eating away big chunks of it. And I just really, really like this. So at this point, you probably want to go to your volume uh, builder and change your voxel size to one. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to create this. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, it's calculating the volume builder. It does take a little while to calculate, so you wanna make sure that you're working in a voxel size of three or four, and then once you're ready to output, uh, then you change your voxel size to one. But once it does calculate it, it's very fast. And we get a lot more resolution, and it looks a lot nicer. If we change this to grout shading, you can see how nice this looks. And the cool thing about this is this is all based on a shader. So we have all of these other options for noise. And if you click this other little fly down here, you can actually see the noise. So we have all of these different options we can play around with and get a lot of different customized looks. All right, I just changed the voxel size to five so that we can have some quick refresh just so I can show you something. I wanted to mention that because we set up this whole thing with a override box matrix with this cube, uh, we can't change the scale of the cube like I mentioned before. We have to do that with the box size. But we do have a lot more power and uh, flexibility by using this because now we can use this cube and we can actually move this cube around and really isolate the parts of our model that we want to have this damage. So if we only want the damage to be over this way, we can just move this around. Another thing we can do is actually rotate this cube. So if we hit R for rotate, we can have a slice coming in diagonally and we can change the scale uh, by going into our volume builder. We can play around with the box size and we can really dial in where we have this damage, which is very helpful. And another thing that I wanted to mention is, I'm not gonna do it for the sake of this tutorial because it'll slow things down too much, but you can also double up these shaders, add another one and add a different noise and you can really start dialing in some pretty amazing looks. That is the new volume builder and measure for Cinema 40 R20. Hope you found that useful and thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.